Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. Comic books are rising in popularity with much credit due to small and big screen adaptations and the broad range of audiences that pick up weekly issues at their neighborhood comic shop. New editions or issues of comics drop on Wednesdays and today we've got a guest whose job it is to read and familiarize himself with these fresh editions. Sequential art that offers entertainment and quite often insightful commentary on society that sometimes comes in deceptively cute packages. John Norfleet, also known as Fleet, is comics manager and owner at the Wizard's Wagon in the Del Mar Loop, and he's here to share a handful of his favorite new releases. John, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Very well. Now, John, you've brought in uh, just five of the many issues released yesterday. Let's start with the first issue of a new story, um, we'll touch on this one just briefly, right? World Tree. Now, right. World Tree is for mature audiences. John, give me a quick breakdown. Um, who's World Tree by and what is it about? And why should I not read this with my <laughs> seven year old? Okay, so World Tree, also, I should say about World Tree is that uh, I actually have to pull it and release it later on uh, this month. But uh, World Tree is about, or it's by a, a series, or it's by a guy named James Tynan. And it's about uh, the effects of the internet and how it, uh, or the, the dark web, and how it, it gets into people's minds and, and, and gets them to commit great heinous acts of violence. Uh, in this particular issue, we follow a, a character whose brother um, goes on a mass killing spree and, uh, and he streams it live. And, uh, and as he does this, more people who see this, there's kind of like a, like a virus thing that gets into the minds of other people. The more people who see this stuff, the more they're influenced to do the same kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So that gets very much at this point that comics are not just about what is uh, fictional, but really reflects a lot of what's going on. Correct, yeah, you, you can very clearly tell that this is inspired by, by real things in the world. Mm -hmm. um, obviously it has its own fictional spin to it. But yeah, comics reflect real life all the time. And can you tell us about the, the writer and the artists who are involved in this particular series? Uh, yeah, so so James Tynan, he's, um, he's a notable uh, horror author specifically. And um, he's, he's done a lot of interesting things. He's also written uh, some superhero fare as well. Um, and then we have Fernando Blanco, who he, he typically, his, his style is more realistic um, than anything else. Um, and you get some really crisp uh, character designs. And you can tell by the way he does his layouts and panels that everything makes sense. So it's easy to follow. It's not overly stylistic or anything mm -hmm. like that. And it's a bunch of, a, a group of people yes. who have been recognized um, by basically the, the Grammys of, of the comic books. Oh, the Eisners, yes, yes. yes. The other, uh, the next one that is that you've brought in is called All Against All. Um, this is the fifth issue, uh, and so this story is a, a bit further along. Well, this obviously. is actually the final issue. Oh, it is the final. Okay, so with, as this being the last one, give us a, a quick sentence to explain this plot. Sure. So the the easy way to explain it is. Um, Let's say uh, we take the, the concept of Tarzan, but we apply it to the to the rules of Predator, the movie Predator from from the 80s. So you have aliens who are who find themselves uh, face to face with a human who is completely decimating them due to gravitational differences and things like that. They're trapped with the human. The human is the alien. And the art style here is pretty interesting. It looks almost like it's drawn with chalk or crayon. Yes, yes. So the the stylistic choices here um, is meant to to give you this kind of alien feel to everything. The, um, when they're in the the Earth setting, everything is is very lush and, and green and things like that. But when we deal with the aliens, uh, they're, they're they're colors that aren't normally associated with life. They're you know 
uh, off-color blues and pinks and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. And the author, um, Alex Papnadel, yes. yeah, does a lot of sci-fi. That is correct. And what does he do in that genre that really stands out? So uh, he he typically does a lot of he takes maybe a, a mundane concept and he he goes all in on this. He, he wrote a story once about a guy's relationship with a with a personal assistant app um, that had everything in that controlled everything about his life and it, and it manifested uh, as a physical or physical to him being um, and it and he just kind of runs with what if what if this weird thing happened and how far can we go? How mm-hmm. far can we take it? Almost like a, like a black mirror approach. Okay. So it's a little bit of like suspension of disbelief, but moving it into, oh, could this really yes. happen? Yes. Okay. The next title that you have brought in is called Monarch. Um, and here, this is the third issue of Monarch. Um, our producer, Maya Norfleet, uh, no known relation <laughs> to you, John. Um, Maybe. She said that she thought that this cover was cute, and I I would agree. Um, this this could have been me when I was a kid. Is this a cute story? It is not. Okay, um, tell us a little bit more. So, the the girl on the cover, her name is Marley, and she's the adoptive sister of the main character Trayvon. Trayvon is an alien um, who was who was seeded into the world and meant to to grow up and assess humanity. Uh, so that when his alien brethren come, they can harvest the planet and do whatever they want to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, in this, in the first issue, the aliens attack and it disrupts life and and so on and so forth. And so, in this issue here, Trayvon is dealing with the struggles of being an alien, but also growing up human and mm-hmm. and regretting the things that are going on here. And he wants to save his family and his friends. So on the cover, I am seeing Marley. She's standing at what looks like a, a bit of a, a cliff. And yes. what is coming from the sky is so that? That would, be, that would be the representation of Trayvon himself coming to, coming to the planet. Mm-hmm. In uh, the previous issue, we see that arrival and uh-huh. his adoptive mother seeing this meteor come down and, and finding it and seeing a, a plant growing in the ground. And inside of that is a child. And so... She adopts him and takes him home, and she and Marley has always known. Uh-huh. So. Sometimes kids always know the things that adults yeah. do not. Before I forget, the, the one that we're just talking about, this is Monarch. It's the third issue. Yes. And then All Against All, you said that's the fifth, the fifth and, and final. final. Does that mean that you have all of the previous issues so that people can – can sort of either catch up or yes. or take in the whole series? In most cases. In these cases, yes, I do have all the issues uh, previous. Okay. The next one is called Eight Billion Genies. Um, this is the eighth and, and final. another final issue of the series. The whole series yeah, apparently is very cool. Um, <laughs> also, Eight Billion, why are there so many genies? So uh, the concept is is that when planet Earth when it reaches a population count of 8 billion people, the Earth releases sort of a defense mechanism to call the population. And in this case, it generates one genie for every living being on the planet, which allows them one wish per person. How did you, I mean, you you review yes. all of the, the new comics that are coming in. What about this sort of stood out among all the ones that came in just yesterday. I believe usually it's like six or seven, and there were seventeen yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so we we typically get in about, I'd say honestly, about sixty to seventy comics that release every week, um, of which I choose I choose a smattering of of new number number ones and in key issues that that I wanted to read and so on, and then I assess what I want to talk about, what I think should. You know, people should hear about things that I think maybe people have has missed out on, and things that I think need a little more help to mm-hmm. get sold. Now, the last one you've brought in is uh, Usagi Yojimo, is uh, that right? Usagi Yojimbo, okay. or Teenage Mutant Ninja oh, Turtles, Yojimbo. and uh, Usagi. Yuta. Okay, there, yeah. I, I missed the B <laughs> in the title. So, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Um, this is one that is rated for teens, mm-hmm. and it's the first issue of a crossover yes tell tell me about that uh the crossover Mm -hmm. so in this case so for 
for fans of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, like the go way back, uh, and not even that, every now and then you'll see the the rabbit character Usagi show up, and this is because the the creator of Usagi and the creator and the Ninja Turtles were friends, and so Usagi is a feudal era uh, Japanese samurai where everyone is an animal in this in this world, and the Ninja Turtles are the Ninja Turtles, and in this event here there is a there's a uh, doctor, his name is Dr. Werewin, who's a time traveler, and through time traveling shenanigans, uh, the turtles and Usagi end up meeting each other, or eventually, well, they don't in this issue, okay. but the time traveling happens. So when people come in and they're looking specifically for local talents, we've talked with Marie Enger and Steens Stewart yeah. here uh, on the show. How much talent are people maybe not noticing that is is here in St. Louis. Oh, I'd say loads. Um, so I, I know, I know, like I know Marie and I know Steens, and they're they're both very great people. And but there's there's a, a rich community of of artists and creators out here who've been who've been you know digging in the coal mines trying to to get out in the world and and piece by piece, little by little, some of them you know hit the mine and they get there and they become professionals and some of them get work on professional things like that. But there are so many people uh, in the St. Louis area that have the talent and the drive and are creating their own things. And, you know, and that's kind of the way, one of the ways to, to get, to get in there. So I'd say on my shelves right now, there's probably 10 or 15 St. Louis, St. Louisans mm-hmm. doing work on the, on the, the mainstream level, but also we have a local small press section as well. Mm -hmm. When people come into your store, um, there are going to be comic books, obviously, that you are really excited about having in and also the ones that are coming. Is there some way like people would know? I haven't had a chance yet to to visit the store. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, what are the comics you're most excited about? Uh, that are coming and like how can I tell that those are the ones that that <laughs> you have your eye on well so I, I release a video on our Facebook page every week that that gives a rundown like last night I did 17 comics normally I don't do 17 that's 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 insane but um <laughs> and the video was 25 minutes long and I apologize for that but um but usually you can tell because there are some books that I don't need to be talking about but I always do anyway and that's things like the x-men uh, especially the X-Men, anything with Scott Summers in it, Cyclops, uh, you, you know, that's how you know that I'm really excited. And horror stories as well. Well, we'll come and visit you sometime soon. John Norfleet, also known as Fleet, is comics manager and owner at The Wizard's Wagon in the Del Mar Loop. Thanks so much for coming by to talk new comics with us. Hey, anytime. This episode was produced by Maya Norfleet. Our audio engineer is Aaron Doerr. Our production intern is Avery Rogers. This podcast was mixed and edited by Aaron. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.